Hi guys, my name is Connie and today I'll be basically condensing my experience of Brian Seigel's three days challenge where we turn an idea or a brief into an actual web flow site. So how he broke it down was day one was understanding the brief and creating a branding kit. Day two was creating the design in Figma and day three is designing it into Webflow, an actual site. And that's how the competition worked out. Um, it was three days, so it was very fast paced and he condensed a lot of information. So I wa what I wanted to do was, I guess, condense it even more and give you a quick summary of it. And you can take a look at my notes too. I took notes on the whole experience, um, mainly the steps that he took so I can refer back to it. This is super helpful if you're a beginner and don't know how to start or how the design process of into a website might look like. So if you're more advanced, you might already know this. Um, so, but this could be a really good refresher, but for my beginners that are kind of just learning like me, um, let's just get started in designing the understanding the brief. So pretty much the first thing that he started with was give us a overview outline of the project brief. This is pretty much step one. When you first uh, talk to a client, you want to understand their business, what their purpose is, the product, um, and other web or other um, competitors. So as you can see on the right hand side, they have a list of like three competitors. The reason why you want to do a little bit of competitor research is so that you don't duplicate or copy the exact same because they're within the same market. You don't want to be like one Airbnb and then create another Airbnb logo and everything's the same. You want to differentiate yourself. So that was very important. You want to understand the customer's persona. So the people that are going to be the users of this website, what do they look like? And pretty much that's step one. You get, you talk to the client, um, the client being the person that wants the website, understand their business goals, objectives, and their customers. And then the next thing that you want to do is pretty much do a mini competitor research, as I mentioned before, and take a quick look at how their websites are created and what are some similarities and some differences. And then once that happens, number two is to start creating a mood board. Once you have an idea of their ideal customer persona, you want to pull out some keywords. This is step number two that you want to do is pull out keywords. So, okay, the demographics is like a man working in tech, married with one to three children, maybe a family member. Depending on each person, each developer and designer will pull different things. So that's why this mood board is supposed to give a design direction that you're going to show to your clients. So they have, so you show them a general idea of the direction you're going with um, because there's many different variations. It could be like more on the techie side, but they weren't imagining too much on the techie side. You can pull that back and have more of a, um, uh, a very neat tree combination, you know, something like that. So that's where you just start pulling out your keywords. And then while having those in mind, you want to just go on any free website like Pinterest, um, um, Pixel, Pix, um, and all those pages. And you just want to pull out a whole bunch, keeping in mind those keywords. And then Ryan just spends a couple time, um, a couple minutes explaining these images, and then once you finish finding all the images, step number three is to identify the common similarities that you are you are looking for. Of course, if you have more time, um, you can go on this process for very long. But we're just going to condense everything. So you find the common similarities between your mood boards, and it's like okay, a lot of it it's very warm color, warm tone colors. Um, very naturey. So you want to pick like a grid of, th of three by three, so a nine, nine grid um, mood board, just so it keeps things consolidated. You want to have a mix of like a user persona, some images of like the icons, the story, um, color palette, stuff like that. All right. So now you have your mood board consolidated. You have your like your ideal feel of what the website's going to look like. Um, step number two is to start picking out 
your colors. So you look for the common colors and um, directly from these nine photos and you want to start playing around with the color scheme. The repeating pattern in design is to find different variations. There's always different variations and it's always going to improve. You, you get to play around with it a lot. That's the lovely part about design. But pretty much you play around with these colors. They're um, how Ryan structured how to pick out colors is to pick a dark color, a darker shade of a color, an accent color that stands out, a light shade, and a light a lighter shade. So that's normally white. Dark shade is like a darker shade of a dark shade. <laughs> okay. The dark shade is normally like a darker version of this color. So for example, this is like a darker green, but then even darker, this is not quite black. This is like a deep, deep green. And the accent, this is the one that I actually went with. So it would be a lot of playing around, different variations, seeing what works. Um, another thing that he did to test the compatibility of the colors is making sure that the, the accent color and the different colors all work well with each other. Because you don't want to end up picking these colors and then finishing the website and then be like, I don't know how to work with these colors because that's going to be a very difficult position to be in. Anyways, to test it out, you would just simply grab your swatch of color and then you just put it on top of the other and see if it stands out um, and if it works well with each other. And it seems like all of these do. And you would just simply do that for like these colors as well, see if they all match, feel like they're good combinations. Then you pretty much have a really good palette. Um, like, for example, this accent color and this color is too similar in, like, shade. So I feel like the dark for this teal blue does not quite work well with this gray. So you might have to adjust um, to see what works and what fits. All righty. Let's see. Number four. Oops. Yes. Number four is starting to create the logo. Um... Oh, fonts, sorry, the next step is finding fonts. So pretty much is similar with whatever keyword you got, like for example, masculine, or if you're going for a techie um, feel, I went for techie um, technology. So I liked it. I wanted to have like thin lines, but also not too thin that is like, like very fragile and feminine. Like, you know, we still want that manly feel, but also technology feel. So then you pretty much go through your list of like Google fonts or like wherever you find your fonts and then you will just compare it. You would just pull out a whole bunch of them and then you would identify, okay, I like the feel of this one. Um, and by doing so, there's the fonts all have difference um, and it like the T in here can be different from the T in here. See right here, this T is straight down while this one is curved. Every little aspect of a font definitely makes up the look and feel of a website as well, and it greatly contributes. So also, similar to finding a mood board, you're just going to search up a whole bunch of them, pick out the ones that you like. I'm pretty sure I picked out like, like, I don't know, 20, and then I just narrowed it down. I went through probably hundreds of them, went and then picked out 20, and then simplified it to like these six, and then... Um, I just, I, I believe I chose Monstra. That's the one that I chose. And then after you pick out your font, then you can work on your logo. Pretty much similar to going back to the keywords. So like keywords I went for, this was like a nature site. So then my inspiration was that this was like a path. Because sometimes when you go on adventures, it's, it's not always a straight road, but the straight the road in the middle is like um, like the car roads. It goes straight down, but I also wanted to be like an adventure. So sometimes roads are windy, but also it can't, to me, it kind of looked like a tree as well. So that represented nature for me. So that's how I thought about um, this design. And then after I created the design using Figma, they're actually made up of peas because um, the name that I went for was called Planco. And then I used the P three times and then just flipped it back and forth. Anyway, so then after you create your logo design, I like to 
um, see if it works well, see what color works well together. So then I created a grid of all the colors and then just kept mismatching until they were um, looked right. All right. Ooh, I should have put a timer on so I just know how long this is. Okay, the next thing is picking out the name. He was, he gave us the name Planco. So then all we had to do was starting to stylize the logo. So incorporation to the visual logo, we also did um, the word. So we played around with Planco with different variations. Like it will constantly come up with different variations. You want to put out the first word and then you want to take out plan and co and then try different variations mm -hmm. playing around with the word. Um, in different formats, in different, in keeping the same font. So in the end, um, I decided to do uppercase P and uppercase C to separate them. But then I also wanted to separate them even more using the two main colors um, with plan and co. All right, so I think this is the brief. So pretty much after you selected all those four or five steps that I explained, that is your simplified project brief. You would put all nine, you would put all nine of your mood board ideas onto here, pick out your, um, test out the fonts, and then you would put in your logos and the different um, swatches of colors that you have for your palette. So that was day one. Alrighty. I'm gonna just quickly go on to day two. This one is gonna be a lot shorter because pretty much the most emphasized things that he talks about is variations, just creating a bunch of variations. I'm pretty sure I left my variations here to show you, but you're just gonna be playing around with it a lot. So given your mood board or your brand kit that you created, you're gonna be pulling um, that into your design. So, okay, so this is now, your brand kit is made. Now you're going to start on your Figma site. You don't directly jump into the designing all the boxes and stuff like that. The first thing you want to do is know your content. I will also share this in the link in the description box below if you want to check out my files and my notes. My notes are pretty straightforward um, with a lot of examples as well. I will also try to find the YouTube videos. It was kind of hard before I was videoing this um, or creating this video. I was trying to look for the Ryan Sagal videos that I was watching, the one hour long ones I recommend you watching. Um, but I need to go look for it again because I really can't find it. But anyways, typically the first page is a hero section. And then the second page, this is, I'm going through the structure, is get them excited about the, the site, okay? It's also important to include testimonials. Handle objections is normally where the frequently asked questions are. Be just because there's no advocate there to really answer the questions, you just want to stop them from leaving before by answering their, your questions, common questions that people have. And then you're going to list the call to action again once you've answered their questions. Remind them, hey, don't forget to register or whatever the call to action is. And lastly, it's typically the footer, which gives them um, navigation to the other section. Okay, so once you get an ideal structure, it'll ultimately depend on what your um, company website's purpose is. So not all the structure is completely the same, but this is just an, like a very basic structure that you can follow. Uh, the second thing that you want to do when creating the Figma site is to create format, like an ideal format that you want to um, play around with. There's different ways of expressing these sections. So that's why you want to play with a lot of layouts. Here, I only played with one, but you can play with a lot more if you have the time. So this was my hero section. Getting them excited, I decided to um, show pictures of, of like the destinations, reviews, testimonials, and then this is the footer. So again, variations of the first thing. So this is the hero section. I was playing around with it a lot. So here it was like a contact information because my inspiration was actually Airbnb. So then these were the different um, headers that I have. I mean, I had hero sections. And then I played a lot, played around with a lot of hero sections. And then this was like the testimonials. This is how I 
showed the um, destinations I wanted to wanted it to hover. There's also playing around with this. And then this was my frequently asked questions. It would be a drop down, And then the last part would be, when will you start your next adventure? And then you pick a date, which leads them back to the top where they would register again. That was also an inspiration from Airbnb. And I thought it was very smart. So anyways, it's all about variations, variations. Um, as you can see here, I decided to um, list out the benefits the three benefits, unbeatable offers, peace of mind, travel expert. You always want to show that. In addition, I created this dark green background to show separation so it's not all white. So that is how you create the structure of the branding design to Figma. And then lastly, it is Webflow. And then pretty much for Webflow, you just take the Figma site that you created, the final Figma site, so this was mine. And you just simply duplicate that um, into Webflow. Uh, in Ryan's video, Ryan Seigel's video, he pretty much um, showed basic, like basic practices or fundamental practices of Webflow. Um, I'll create that in a different video just because I don't want to extend it any longer than it already is. Um, I did say a lot, so if you do need to go back and refer to the document, I will also link that in the description box below, but I pretty much explained um, each of the steps. And if this was helpful or you would like more detail in some certain areas that I briefed over too quickly, feel free to leave it in the comments below. It definitely tells me that someone's watching, this is really helpful to them, and that motivates me to create more videos. So that sounds good and I hope you guys have a good day. Thank you.